For a while, I've been interested in the idea of writing about writing. Stories about the experience of being an author. When I heard of Yellowface, I hoped I'd found a great example to study. The book is described as a satire of racial diversity in the publishing industry and is by R.F. Quang. She's already a successful author of the Poppy War Trilogy and Babel. This gave me even more hope that I might have found the book I was looking for. But was it? Let's find out. Spoilers ahead. The book opens on June Haywood, a writer who only has one unsuccessful novel to her name. She's meeting Athena Lou, her long-term friend and much more successful author, to celebrate a deal Athena's just signed with Netflix. Throughout their evening together, June's inner monologue is filled with spiteful jealousy, feeling like Athena was gifted the chances she deserved. June wonders if this was due to the woke culture in publishing, whether the industry is skewing the focus towards Asian Americans and other minorities like Athena. Eventually, they go back to Athena's luxurious apartment, and to her surprise, June's bitterness begins to subside. She's having real fun with Athena tonight. Suddenly, though, Athena starts to choke on a pancake, and despite June's best efforts to perform CPR, by the time the emergency services arrive, Athena is dead. In the aftermath, we discover that June has walked out with the only copy of Athena's latest manuscript, and upon reading it, decides to submit it to her agent as her own work. This opening is really quite stunning. The interactions between June and Athena feel very authentic, and June's inner monologue, bitter and jealous, is really compelling. Athena's death is surprising, and while a bit over the top, it worked and left me wanting more. As I'll get into later, that's my only real criticism of this opening. It feels like it should have been longer. The next section of the novel shows us June redrafting and publishing Athena's book as her own work. The book is called The Last Front, and it's a story about the contribution of Chinese labourers during the First World War. In parts, this section works well for me. It gave good insight into June's motivations, the source of her bitterness, as she contrasts the positive experience of publishing this novel with her last book. But at times it reads like narrative non-fiction rather than a novel, like Quang wants to teach us about the nuts and bolts of the publishing industry rather than pushing forwards the story. At one point, June lists out the big five publishing houses for no particular reason, and I did wonder if this was deliberate padding. Was Yellowface at some point below the magic 70,000 word count that a lot of publishers seem to regard as a minimum these days? It turns out that The Last Front is a huge success, and a large chunk of Yellowface is devoted to the strange and often strained relationship which June develops with the Asian American community through that success. I quite enjoyed this. It begins with a member of June's publishing team, Candy Slee, suggesting the book be reviewed for sensitivity, given that June is a white woman writing about Chinese history. June rejects this suggestion. Candice responds by posting a one-star review of the book online, and June complains to her publisher, who responds by firing Candice. This is great conflict, and a neat way of showing how vindictive June can be. There's a more light-hearted moment when June gets invited to speak at a Chinese community event, and the person who invited her only realises she's not actually Chinese herself when she arrives to pick her up. It's the kind of cringeworthy comedy you'd find in Curb Your Enthusiasm. I feel like this was the heart of the story, this conflict around the misappropriation of culture, and the title of the book certainly suggests it was meant to be. I was really hoping Kwong was going to stick the landing on this, but unfortunately, the last few hours were a real letdown. There's a downward spiral in quality through long sections attempting to explore the dark side of social media, but which were so padded with fictional tweets they became tedious. This culminates in a very silly, cliched ending, racing through all manner of tropes from genres the book had never previously touched upon. This included Athena seemingly coming back from the dead to haunt June through online messages, 
followed by some really clumsy handling of mental illness, and the totally incredulous reveal that it was in fact secretly Candice Lee in disguise who was behind everything. Finally, June's character arc ends with her deciding to appeal to right-wing culture wars audiences in order to fight back against Candice, who starts a slur campaign against her. The whole story had apparently been a negative change arc about June going from a nice liberal ally to an anti-woke exploiter. And honestly, I could have gotten behind that if the book had done the work to set it up. But ironically, the biggest downfall of this book, featuring themes of cultural appropriation, is that it had an identity crisis of its own. It didn't seem to really know what it wanted to be, so it tried to be a bit of everything. Every theme, every genre, every point of view. Ultimately, it ends up being fairly forgettable, because trying to cover so much ground means it can only be covered superficially. As I mentioned a couple of times earlier, the book feels padded out at times, and I think this is exacerbated by strange pacing. The death of Athena happens about 45 minutes into the 9 minute audiobook. The first act concludes soon after, when June decides to publish Athena's work as her own. That happens about 10% of the way in, which makes this a very short first act. I would love to see a draft of the book where that very enjoyable first act is extended to a more usual 20%, so we could really fully understand and enjoy the relationship between Athena and June. We could then edit out a lot of the fat from the rest of the novel, without it ending up too short. On the plus side though, when the book is good, it's really good. That opening will live long in the memory, especially that deep dive into the bitter mindset of an unsuccessful writer. Sometimes it's like looking in a dark mirror. The prose was strong throughout, and I do feel like Quang did her best to give the story some balance, exploring key themes from multiple perspectives. So would I recommend Yellow Face? Well, if you really like the concept, and you don't take it too seriously, you'll probably enjoy it. At the moment, it's got a 3.9 star rating on Amazon, and I'd say that's about right. It's above average, and there are a few moments of greatness, but ultimately, it's a bit forgettable. It gave me some of what I was looking for in a book focused on writers and writing, so while not a classic, it was worth the audible credit. But what do you think? Have you read Yellow Face? Did you like it? Should I check out any of Quang's other novels? And are there any other novels about writers and writing you'd recommend? Let me know in the comments below. Many thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. I hope I'll see you next time. And until then, keep writing.